Oh, look at that. It's a telescope. Three or four were made. Three or four ever? Period. These are very, very rare. I like it even more now. This is a photographer studio camera. You think you could still even take a picture of this thing? I wouldn't think, but you could. I have got a collection of Civil War letters. Never have I seen this many in one place outside of a museum. Every single letter has something super special. Who's anybody else? Yes! I'm Paul Brown, and auctions are in my blood. Sell to him. I was raised in an auction house, and now I've got my own place. Gallery 63. Sydney's my office manager. John's my picker, and Delfino can fix anything so we can sell it. Whether the pieces come to us or we go to them, fascinating items come in every day. And we auction them off to the highest bidder. We take our commission, and the seller gets the rest. You never know what can bring big bucks or big disappointment. And it ain't over till you hear. You oh, bought it. Hi, I'm Scott Nielsen. It's Scott, Hi, my Cheryl cousin Cheryl McKeown. Nice to meet you. Come on in. What you got in that box? I have got what I think is a pretty extensive collection of Civil War letters and correspondence. Right. Today, Scott and his cousin Cheryl came in with a box full of papers from the Civil War. I've gotten letters in from the war before, and it looks like they have quite a few. So this should be interesting. So how do you come to have all this stuff? What's the story here? Our great-great-grandfather was a captain, Union Army, 13th Indiana Volunteers. Yeah, really? He survived the war. His youngest child saved all this stuff. Our grandparents ended up with it. When the last grandparent died, my parents and her parents, we all went in and but, split everything up. And so I get individual Civil War Day letters all the time. One here, two there. Never have I seen this many in one place outside of a museum or a library. Diary of the Rebellion. This is his narrative of the Civil War. 1861 and 1862 complete every trial and travail they went through. It'll always be remembered when a thrill of indignation swept across the country when it was known that the rebels collected at Charleston, South Carolina, regardless of law. I mean, so he, he was clearly a Union man, wasn't he? He sure was. One Springfield rifle musket complete. And one take out, take one NCO weapons. officer sword. Wow, this is great. I've never seen anything like this before. Captain True Blood's collection is beyond amazing. There's letters, journals, Confederate money, and they just kept pulling stuff out. Here is an original enlistment form that you would fill out. Oh my God. This is in wonderful shape, too. This one, this yeah. one document right here. Yeah. The conditions on some of them is fantastic. I can't believe this is 150 years old. Why are you selling all this stuff? This stuff has value, and I'd like to start a small little restaurant, perhaps. Wait, what do you like to cook? Soup what? and chili, bro. <laughs> With the money I get, I'm going to put it towards a small little soup and chili takeout joint. And the cousins are all about that. Right, because they like to eat. Absolutely. Where, where are you thinking about in terms of value for the whole aggregate of it all? You know, if it brought in 5000 I suppose I'd do the happy dance for it. I'd venture to say that any one of these Civil War documents is valuable on its own. But I'm going to call a Civil War memorabilia expert and tell me if the collection is worth as much as the seller's asking. Thank you all so much. You it's been, it's been a pleasure. Right. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Tom. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Tom. What you got in that box? something here to show you. All right. Oh, look at there. It's a telescope. Today, Tom brought in an antique telescope. We don't get many of those in, so when we do, it's important to get a sense of their history. I bought this at a garage sale about 20 years ago. They said it was from World War II. They originally wanted $100 for it. Then we wound up negotiating at 75 Really? Yes. I'll give you 100 for it. <laughs> uh, no, I think I'll do a little better. <laughs> I don't know much about telescopes, but this one does appear to be in great shape. And for a yard sale find, Tom may have hit the jackpot. We put it away. We forgot about it. Two years ago, we were redoing the basement, and we had an old army trunk with a telescope. My wife was going to throw it out. Really? And yeah, she just thought it was junk, and I went researching, and I saw a picture of a army gentleman from the Civil War with this exact telescope. Civil War? If the seller's right, that would make this telescope a lot more rare and a lot more valuable. By World War II, telescopes are everywhere. In the mid-19th century, telescopes were not everywhere. Oh, it's inscribed a little bit down here. U.S. Army Signal Telescope. Does it work? Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, that's remarkably clear, isn't it? So I know we've got an old telescope, and I know it was used by a U.S. soldier. So now all we have to do is verify when it was actually used. What do you want to get for it? I would really be thrilled with $1,000. So you paid $75. That's pretty good interest. I wish I could get that kind of return on everything. My son is uh, buying a house right now, and I figure any money I get for the telescope I was going to give to him to put towards the house. Let me call an expert and probably be able to determine exactly what it is, where it was from, how rare it is, and what we can hope to get out of it. I'm really excited about this telescope. If I can verify it's actually from the Civil War, we're going to have a whole lot of interest come auction day. We'll get it sold, we'll get paid. Get you paid. Everybody wins, oh, right? Hi. I'm Steve Hello. Allen. How you doing? Today, yeah, good. Oh, good to nice see to you, Paul. You. This is my wife, Wanda. Hey, Wanda, nice here. to meet you. This is a photographer studio camera, an 8x10 glass camera. Oh.
probably about 1880s from a photographer's studio in Nashville. This is a photographer's studio camera. People would have gone to the studio to have their portraits taken. It's very nice wood. It is. It's a great, And the belt is object. in great shape. I'm downsizing oh, yeah. my collection because I've been a pack rat for a very, very long time. When I met him five years ago, yeah. he had to buy a house right. to house all of his possessions. You mean his stuff has a separate yes. house? Yes. A whole house plus other storage areas. We need to get rid of some of these things because he's been hoarding them for many, many years. Theoretically, you think you could still even take a picture of this thing? I would think, uh, Paul, that you could. Just had your film holder for 8 by 10 and right. put your glass negative back there. I like it. Good, what, what, do you, what do you want to get for it? Oh, I would say maybe 400 From the money that we uh, get, we're going to take that and put that in our retirement nest egg. Photography items can be tricky because they require a specific set of collectors to buy them. So I'm going to bring in an expert to give me an idea of what I can expect at auction. Hopefully this thing will sell on a snap. It's a neat piece. It may even do better. It's not where it starts, it's where it ends. Right. That's what I said. It's my line. What are you talking about? Hey, where'd you come from? That's awesome. You want to work here? <laughs> I want to show you one letter. This particular letter references John Wilkes Booth three years before he assassinated President Abraham Lincoln at Ford Theater. Hey, Mike, what's up? How are you, man? Excellent. Thanks for coming back. Today, I brought my buddy Mike Cotter in. He knows an awful lot about rare books, rare documents, and that sort of thing. Mike has been coming in for several days now to help me assess Captain True Blood's letters. I think this one is pretty astounding. It's voluminous, isn't it? I mean, look it at is. it all. It's a ton of stuff. Give me some of your highlights. What have you found? The two diaries in particular, they kind of speak for themselves. They corroborate all this other stuff that we have. We're going to take just a quick look at the 1864 diary from right. Captain True Blood. This was in his pocket. This was carried around. Each day had its own little spot. So having an account every day or so... That's a pretty big deal. Let's move on to the letters. Every single letter has something super special in it. I want to show you one letter that is my favorite of all the letters. This particular letter references John Wilkes Booth in his role as an actor in 1862, three years before he assassinated President Abraham Lincoln at Ford's Theater. That's strong. When Mike showed me that John Wilkes Booth was mentioned in one of the actual letters of Captain True Blood, I, mean, I was astounded. We're talking about the assassin of President Lincoln some three years in the future. I had no idea really that Booth was that well known as an actor. Evidently he was. Every single letter he was writing with a purpose. In my opinion, he wanted to write a book about his travels, his experiences. The closest we have is the narrative that he started to write. One man's thoughts, reactions, feelings of the Civil War. The True Blood collection is important and unique because it's all in the same hand. It's all from his perspective. There's no doubt in your mind that this is what it appears to be, correct? Yeah, I mean, this is just the real deal. We're looking for ink used at the period. We look for things like postmarks and dates. We're looking for so many things, and this has it all and is ready for display in a museum. You know, just as a whole, throw me out a number as a total collection. Roughly ten grand. Well, all right, then. You're looking at a tremendous first-hand account from True Blood. I think it's a fair price. God, I hope I can get it. Scott and Cheryl are only hoping for $5,000, so if we can get even close to Mike's estimate of $10,000, we'd all be thrilled. I want Scott to open his restaurant. Maybe he'd even name a dish after me. Paul? Mike Reynolds, how you doing? Oh, hey, Mike. Welcome. Today I called him Mike, who's a local astronomer, and he knows a ton about telescopes. I'm hoping he can take a look at this one and tell me if it's really from the Civil War. When I look at the telescope, I look at the quality of the brass. I look at the quality of the leather. And people sometimes think, oh, I'll shine up the brass, I'll be better. Man. Don't ever do that. It may look nice and shiny, right. but it takes away from the historical value. Original lens is intact. Original eyepiece is intact. That's the leather nice. itself looks like it's in very good shape. Notice the quality of the scribing on here. U.S. Army Signal Corps. It basically talks about the fact that this instrument was part of the Union Army and used for the Civil War. Man, that's good news. This telescope just got a whole lot cooler and a whole lot more valuable. This telescope would have been used to look at communications coming in from the battlefield. You'd have men who were in battle who would wave flags different ways and then communicate what was going on back to headquarters. It's about 30 power. With a 30 power, how far can one see on a clear day? About 15 miles. So the fact that you would have this on your team would be a distinct advantage over huge your advantage. opposition, huge I would advantage. think. Only a handful of these were actually distributed. It turns out that probably three or four were made. Three or four ever? Period. Period. These are very, very rare. I like it even more now. I am stoked. Getting an item in this rare is, well, rare. And in my business, rarity means money. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's a rare one. It really is it's rare. It's in pretty good shape. It's in very good shape. What's it worth? It's an auction. Probably starts at around 3000 The seller's hoping for $1,000. But the rarity of the telescope and its connection to the Civil War means we may be able to get in three times as much at auction. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Paul. It's, it's been a pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Hey, 
Delfino. Yes, sir. I found this clock on the floor. Can you make it work? Yeah, what's wrong with it? Nice one. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> oh, by the way, how about that True Blood collection? The Civil War letters? Yeah, how are we gonna lot those? When a big collection comes in, there's always a dilemma. Do we split things up or sell them together? There really is no right answer. It just depends on the item, and it's always a gamble. As much as I'd like to keep it together for history and posterity, you know, we're working for the sellers. Scott and Cheryl want to get the most money they can. Yeah. But I will keep the letters together. The letters will be all one lot. Okay, good. The narrative will be one lot. The journals will be one lot. And the ephemera, all the miscellaneous paper good, will be one lot. So we got four lots out of it. Okay. This time, I'm going to roll the dice and split up the items. I think in this case, it's the best way to get the most money for the seller. And ultimately, that's my number one responsibility. we got a lot of good 19th century stuff, don't we? Yeah, what do we, we have? Well, i got the telescope. we got the uh, old camera. And the True Blood letters. Why don't we try and display that all together? Try and keep it all together like a little themed area. All right. I like a theme. Having several 19th century items should help us on auction day. So then you can reach out to our Civil War and history buffs, and hopefully they can battle out for these great items. So lock those True Blood letters that way, okay. and uh, you work on late laying it out properly in the gallery. All right. No all right. Thanks, y'all. Sir. Hey, I'm Phil Vogel. Oh, Phil, thanks for coming, man. I'm glad you came. I got that great old camera I want to show you. I brought Phil in to assess the 1880s camera. He owns his own vintage photography shop and knows a heck of a lot more than I do about the subject. There's a few things we like to look at. We like to look at the condition of the camera first. Right. One way we can determine that is to shine a light through the bellows and okay. see if any enters see if in. Get, see if we get any pinholes. I'm smelling some, some dry chemical, man. <laughs> I don't see any light, though. If you're not seeing any light, then we have a good bellows. All right. And the other thing we want to look at is the lens. Yeah, that's a nice, clear, it's clear lens. Isn't it? Very clear, no scratches. It is a good lens. And then we also notice that there's a number on here, which would be their equivalent of a serial, serial number. number. Okay. I was able to find an old advertisement that actually lists the years and oh, the serial numbers. Okay, here we go. So 20881, right? So it's between 1890 and 1900. Yeah, I would put it around 1891. How about that? The seller thought the camera was from the 1880s, but it's really from 1891. It's not a big difference, so I don't think it'll affect the value much, if at all. Especially since Phil says the camera is still in working order. What's this camera going to be worth at auction, you think? Uh, I would say around $350 at auction. Okay. The seller wants more than that, so we'll have to get creative with our marketing. Hopefully the history buffs that Cindy's reaching out to will bid big for the camera, too. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me, Paul. Have great day. Have a great day. Can't wait to get this thing started. Auction day is finally here. This will be like a big old wedding reception, only with better souvenirs. I love the Civil War letters. It was pretty cool to see those up close. I'd rather go to an auction than eat, if that says anything. What's up, Atlanta, Georgia? I'm glad to see you, Gallery 63 today. We've got some awesome 19th century items to sell. Cindy reached out to bring in some history buffs for the largest collection of Civil War papers we've ever had. They're from one captain's viewpoint, which makes them historic and rare. The money that Scott gets for this is going to help him open up a restaurant. That's his dream. Speaking of rare, we've also got a Civil War telescope. The seller bought it at a garage sale for $75. What a deal. I'm hoping to get as much money as I possibly can because my son's buying a house right now and I'm going to give it to him. First, we're going to bring out the 1891 box camera. This thing is really cool, and the seller hopes to get 400 bucks for it. So we'll have to see what develops at auction. All the original parts, guys. A great piece of American history. Hoogie is 100. Yes or no? Hoogie is 100. I know a picture says a thousand words, but I really only need one to describe the beginning of the camera auction. Dead. I couldn't believe it. This thing was sweet. I knew that camera would get some interest. Sometimes it just takes one person to start up a whole flurry of bids. Now 600. 550 here, 600 your turn. Here's 600 dollars. Anybody else? Last third, final call, 600 dollars. I have sold out. 550. Buyer number 396. I'm very happy I bought this camera. I've always been a fan of old photography. I am an amateur, but it's a great start for my camera collection. The camera auction was a huge success. The audience was in a bidding mood, and I hoped it would hold out for the Civil War items. Civil War dated letters and journals. I was really excited to finally auction off the Civil War papers. I kind of grabbed Scott's arm and I'm going, okay, here we go, here we go. But it wasn't going as I expected. Anybody else? Anybody else?
Next up, that Civil War telescope. What a great piece of history. Paul told me how rare that telescope is, and it should bring at least $3,000. So I'm hopeful. This was used during the Civil War to detect and intercept enemy signals and messages. A rare find. This is one of only three or four to known to exist. How much you have? How much? $500. I'll take $600. $600 and now $7. $800. $800 and now $900. $1,000. And now 1100 And now 1200 The bidding picked up, the momentum started kicking in. Anticipation, your heart starts beating a little faster. It's nerve-wracking. 1500 The bidding raced right past the $1,000 that the seller wanted. So I focused on the 3000 that the expert said it was worth. Right over there, this guy waving his car. 2000 thank you. 2500 How about 2250 dollars 2500 Texas. 25 out of the 2500 is bid here, but the last call out of the fair warning, 2600 is the buck. Sell to the Longhorn, so 2500 paddle number 434, you bought it. I thought it'd be interesting to look through it and imagine what they were looking through at the time that they were using that telescope. In my mind, I can enjoy that. The hammer fell on the telescope at $2,500, and Tom's got to be happy about that. I mean, he got it at a garage sale. I think we did good. Kind of a windfall from $75. I'm happy. <laughs> Last up are the Civil War papers. They are the most extensive set of historical documents we've ever had at the gallery. And I felt like they had success written all over them. We are hoping to get at least $5,000 out of this collection. Hopefully I can open a small little restaurant back home. Civil War dated letters and journals. The seller's great, great, great grandfather was Captain Alva Trueblood. He wrote all these letters. I decided to split the papers up into four separate lots. I expected a fair amount of interest, so I'd hope this strategy would bring in more money for the seller. The experts said they were worth ten thousand dollars, so we were aiming high. First up, the manuscript by Captain Trueblood himself. I'm gonna the first one's the manuscript. Time it out here, but maybe five hundred, seven fifty, nine hundred. And when they started the bidding process, I kind of grabbed Scott's arm, and I'm like, okay, here we go, here we go. Who pay 11? Want to take 11? And then there was a telephone bid. It was great. Yes. 11, now 12. Anybody else here? 12 dollars. Last chance. Sold 1100 Bid number 438. When it finally sold at 1100 it was like, woohoo! We're off the ground. <laughs> yes, we've started. Next item we're going to sell. We got off to a good start toward the seller's $5,000 goal, but I really wanted to beat it. So I brought out the other Civil War items and prepared for battle. The next item is Daily Journals. Coming to the Heath 3, maybe the 4 and 475. So 475 times 2 by 462. Everything that's not a letter, this is all the ephemera. High 14. Oh, look at that. It's a telescope. Three or four were made. Three or four ever? Period. These are very, very rare. I like it even more now. This is a photographer's studio camera. You think you could still even take a picture of this thing? I would think that you could. I have got a collection of Civil War letters. Never have I seen this many in one place outside of a museum. Every single letter has something super special. Did it about hers? Anybody else? Yes! Oh, I have a I have Paul Brown and auctions are in my blood. Sell to him. So I was raised in an auction house, and now I've got my own place. Gallery 63. Sydney's my office manager. John's my picker, and Delfino can fix anything so we can sell it. Will the pieces come to us, or we go to them? Fascinating items come in every day. And we auction them off to the highest bidder. So we take our commission, and the seller gets the rest. You never know what can bring big bucks or big disappointment. And it ain't over till you hear. Oh, oh, oh. You it. Hi, I'm Scott Nielsen. It's Scott, Hi, my Cheryl cousin McEwen. Cheryl. Nice Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl. Come on in. What you got in that box? I have got what I think is a pretty extensive collection of Civil War letters and correspondence. Right. Today, Scott and his cousin Cheryl came in with a box full of papers from the Civil War. I've gotten letters in from the war before, and it looks like they have quite a few, so this should be interesting. So how do you come to have all this stuff? What's the story here? Our great-great-grandfather was a captain, Union Army, 13th Indiana Volunteers. Yeah, really? He survived the war. His youngest child saved all this stuff. Our grandparents ended up with it. When the last grandparent died, my parents and her parents, we all went in and but, split everything up. And so I get individual Civil War Day letters all the time. One here, two there. 
Never have I seen this many in one place outside of a museum or a library. Diary of the Rebellion. This is his narrative of the Civil War. 1861 and 1862 complete every trial and travail they went through. It'll always be remembered when a thrill of indignation swept across the country when it was known that the rebels collected at Charleston, South Carolina, regardless of law. I mean, so he, he was clearly a Union man, wasn't he? He sure was. One Springfield rifle musket complete. A one, nine, out, one NCO weapons. officer sword. Wow, this is great. I've never seen anything like this before. Captain Trueblood's collection is beyond amazing. There's letters, journals, Confederate money, and they just kept pulling stuff out. Here is an original enlistment form that you would fill out. Oh my God. This is in wonderful shape, too. This one, yeah. this one document right here. Yeah. The conditions on some of them is fantastic. I can't believe this is 150 years old. Why are you selling all this stuff? This stuff has value, and I'd like to start a small little restaurant, perhaps. Wait, what do you like to cook? Soup and chili, bro. <laughs> With the money I get, I'm going to put it towards a small little soup and chili takeout and joint. And mm -hmm. the cousins are all about that. Right, because they like to eat. Absolutely. Where, where are you thinking about in terms of value for the whole aggregate of it all? You know, if it brought in 5000 I suppose I'd do the happy dance for it. I'd venture to say that any one of these Civil War documents is valuable on its own. But I'm going to call a Civil War memorabilia expert and tell me if the collection is worth as much as the seller's asking. Thank you all so much. It's been, it's been a pleasure. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm Tom. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you, Tom. What you got on that something here to show you. All right. Oh, look at there. It's a telescope. Today, Tom brought in an antique telescope. We don't get many of those in, so when we do, it's important to get a sense of their history. I bought this at a garage sale about 20 years ago. They said it was from World War II. They originally wanted $100 for it. Then we wound up negotiating a 75. Really? Yes. I'll give you 100 for it. <laughs> uh, no, I think I do a little better. <laughs> I don't know much about telescopes, but this one does appear to be in great shape. And for a yard sale find, Tom may have hit the jackpot. We put it away. We forgot about it. Two years ago, we were redoing the basement, and we had an old army trunk with a telescope. My wife was going to throw it out. Really? Yeah, she just thought it was junk, and I went researching, and I saw a picture of a army gentleman from the Civil War with this exact telescope. Civil War? If the seller's right, that would make this telescope a lot more rare and a lot more valuable. By World War II, telescopes are everywhere. In the mid-19th century, telescopes were not everywhere. Oh, it's inscribed a little bit down here. U.S. Army Signal Telescope. Does it work? Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, that's remarkably clear, isn't it? So I know we've got an old telescope, and I know it was used by a U.S. soldier. So now all we have to do is verify when it was actually used. What do you want to get for it? I would really be thrilled with $1,000. So you paid $75. That's pretty good interest. I wish I could get that kind of return on everything. My son is uh, buying a house right now, and I figured any money I get for the telescope, I was going to give to him put towards the house. Let me call an expert in. Probably be able to determine exactly what it is, where it was from, how rare it is, and what we can hope to get out of it. I'm really excited about this telescope. If I can verify it's actually from the Civil War, we're going to have a whole lot of interest come auction day. We'll get it sold, we'll get paid. Get you paid. Everybody wins, oh, right? Hi. I'm Hello. Steve Allen. How you doing? Steve. Today, good. Oh, good to nice see to you, Paul. You. This is my wife, Wanda. Hey, Wanda, nice here. to meet you. This is a photographer studio camera, an 8 by 10 glass oh. camera. Probably about 1880s from a photographer studio in Nashville. This is a photographer studio camera. People would have gone to the studio to have their portraits taken. It's very nice wood. It is. It's and a great, And the belt is object. in great shape. I'm downsizing oh, yeah. my collection because I've been a pack rat for a very, very long time. When I met him five years ago, yeah. he had to buy a house right. to house all of his possessions. You mean 